Okay, well, good afternoon, everybody. We're going to get started here on our uh, roundtable. So uh, thank you for everybody for joining us to today's Small Business Roundtable. Thank you for uh, being part of this virtual format that we have set up for today. I want to thank my staff that have done a good job getting this all organized so we can have a good productive conversation. As you all know, one of the priorities I laid out in my 2021 State of the State Address concerned continued assistance for our small businesses. Uh, which account for almost half of the jobs that we have here in the state of Nevada. I'm glad to pull this group together as one more step in the process to provide support for our vibrant and diverse small business community. Throughout the pandemic, our small businesses have worked hard to meet the unprecedented challenges. And I know it has not been easy for any of you. Owners and staff have stepped up in unbelievable ways adapting the changes this virus has caused all of us and continue to adapt any way possible. It's not lost on me that the mitigation measures we put in place to help keep people safe and the small businesses open have had a serious impact on your ability to conduct business. And trust me, I am doing everything that I can to loosen these restrictions that were put in place. Despite what you might have heard, I've taken no pleasure in making these decisions, quite the opposite. I'm eager as all Nevadans to bring back our economy, bring back our lives better and stronger than ever before. But I know that we do, as we work towards these goals, small businesses need help now. They need immediate assistance. That's why I was proud to partner with Treasurer Zach Conine and GOA Director Michael Brown to launch a small business assistance program that was named PETS, which is providing $10,000 grants to small businesses. So far, we put $50 million into this vital program. And in my state of the state address, I've asked lawmakers to add an additional $50 million more, bringing the total to $100 million once approved. I know that for small businesses in our state, $10,000 can result in keeping staff employed and paying the bills to keep doors open but we know that's simply not enough. That's why I've also partnered with Lieutenant Governor Kate Marshall to work to create a small business advocacy center to be a one-stop location to help small businesses take advantage of the resources that exist and help them cut through the red tape. The goal is to create a centralized location for small businesses to get the help and resources that they all need. Today, I am particularly excited to hear from all of you our small business owners, the people that are on the ground, on how the state can continue to support you as we move forward. Before we open it up to the small business owners, I wanted to introduce who we have here at the round table with us. First, Lieutenant Governor Kate Marshall is here with me. We also have Treasurer, you wanna wave Kate? There you are, okay. We also have Treasurer Zach Conine and GOA Director Michael Brown is also with us. I'm glad to welcome Trina Giles from Grits Cafe Thank you again, Trina, for joining me in my State of the State address. We also have Cassandra Barcella from Empowered Cafe, located in the Grant Sawyer Building. This cafe is a true favorite of my staff and I when I am in Southern Nevada. Jonathan and Ashley Bradley are joining us from Spoon a Bowl. They run a frozen yogurt and ice cream food truck, as well as Walter Glashinsky, Glashinsky I'm probably butchering that, I apologize, Walter, from Smiling Whole Pizza. And I have heard so much good stuff about you, I can't tell you. Uh, thank you for joining us here today. Thank you. You bet. Finally, Cody Highsmith from Villa Dantes is here with us. Uh, Cody focuses on a restaurant and hospitality consulting business. I think we are nearly ready to move on to the next step of the round table, which is hearing directly from our small businesses then we can hear from Lieutenant uh, Governor Kate Marshall on how the state can help small businesses find resources and Treasurer Conine on Pets Grants updates before we pull to a close. I think I've got some staff members. I see Megan Delaney up in the upper corner there uh, to help us move through the next section. And my chief of staff, Michelle White, is on here too. So if you can see her, she's waving. There you go. Okay, go ahead, Megan. Thank you, Governor. And I think Michelle actually is going to lead us through the next part, but thank okay. you, Governor. I'll be back towards the end. Okay. Sorry there, Michelle. I put Megan ahead of you. Go ahead. That's Michelle. okay. I knew she was your favorite. And yeah. now it's confirmed. Michelle White. 
thanks, right. thanks, Governor. Thanks everyone for joining. Um, I'm so familiar with I, so many of you and Trina, very nice to see you. It's been so long and I miss your food very much and look forward to being back down south to eat it. Um, but uh, uh, really wanted to get everyone together today, as Governor said, um, on, this, on this push and assistance for small businesses. Again, we know that they have been so hard hit throughout the pandemic. Um, and one of the things, you know, the governor mentioned was this additional $50 million for um, the small business assistance grants. And uh, this has to go to the legislature and will require legislative action um, to award that additional 50 million, bringing the total to 100 million. We've received incredibly positive feedback um, from the legislators we've spoken to and really feel positive about it. But um, I think we wanted to kick it off by hearing from you all on other things you'd like us to pass on to them as some of you have been recipients of this, um, of the grant funding and anything you'd like for us to tell them as far as how this has been beneficial or what you've been able to do with these funds as you've navigated being a business owner in this pandemic. And I think we can start there. We can hear from the small business owners. Is that where you're going here? Who wants to jump first? Go ahead, Trina. Oh, just make sure to unmute. You gotta unmute, there you go. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Trina Giles. I am the owner of Grits Cafe. Thank you, Governor, for inviting me to the round table. Um, and thank you for allowing me to be a part of your state of state address. That was very um, positive for my business. This pandemic has been um, trying, but we're getting through it. And for me, the funding will go directly to payroll. Um, we did receive our funding. Um, some of the challenges that I've faced most recently um, that I would like to talk about is when an employee of a small business tests positive for COVID, the impact is similar to that of your family member because we are small business. And so um, I most just recently had that happen and uh, my entire staff is being tested. We're slated to reopen on Thursday. Our results will be back Thursday. We did get tested at the Cashman Field Center set up by UMC and um, Homeland Security and the state. And so I definitely appreciate that, um, as well as fogging and sanitizing of my restaurant. And so during that time, um, we're losing revenue, as well as some of my employees are losing their pay on the days that we're normally open. We've been closed since Monday and we're slated to reopen, like I said, on Thursday. And so that's something that if we could talk to legislation about, um, how can we assist small businesses who have an employee who tests positive and how we can assist them in expediting getting their businesses back open, um, maybe expedited testing and resources to continue payroll, which um, I'll be using my pet grant for that. So just something that just happened most recently. And as we know, this pandemic will probably end up affecting a lot of families and small businesses eventually. So this is my opportunity to share with you my experience and maybe we can look a little bit further into the effects that it may have on small businesses from a employee who tests positive. Thank you, Trina. This is Megan Delaney in the governor's office. I'm going to jump in and, and sort of try to help keep us um, moving along. I think we do have folks on staff who are taking notes um, and so we'll be able to collect all the information you're sharing um, and try to, to work through these things as we move forward. So thank you so much for, for sharing that. Um, and I think if we, we can go next to the folks from the Empowered Cafe in the, in the Grant Sawyer building, if they're on the line and can, can unmute themselves. Hi guys, how are you? Hi, how are you? Hi, we're Chris and Cassandra from Empowered Cafe, a husband and wife team, so we can be without our masks. <laughs> 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 Just kidding guys. Um, so, you know, we wanted to say, I want to piggyback off of what Grits Cafe said. There was, those were very valid points. And we actually just experienced very similar situation because I actually got COVID. 
and we had to shut down our cafe completely because we run it and then we have two employees and we had to completely shut down because we didn't want to, for one, affect all the state employees, but also affect our employees. And that was really tough because we've lost out of three weeks of business. And, you know, it went through our entire family and I immediately went into isolation. Luckily, our workers did not get affected. Nobody at the state building got it from us because we were able to quarantine so quickly. But three weeks, our product went bad. Yeah. Um, our employees were without pay for three weeks, yeah. you know, and that was really hard. We did just get the PETS grant, which is going to help with payroll. But it's hard to cover payroll when you're not working. You know, and when you, you can't, we couldn't afford to keep them on sure. and then we'd run out of the pets grant and then we'd still be stuck where we were before. Yeah. Plus like Trina said before, it's a small business. We only have two employees right yeah. now. We had three before, you know, but uh -huh. um, if anybody got sick and had to take a two to three week leave, I don't know how I'd replace them, you know? And um, then I don't know how they're going to survive. And, yeah. and what something unique about us is we try to employ people with disabilities. That's the whole goal of our cafe is to employ people with special needs and we train the blind business operators on how to run um, their businesses and we had to put a hold on all of that and cut back on how many employees we could hire with disabilities which is a shame because that's you know a passion of ours um i think when looking to um find out how we could do better at anything i think looking at a global view is very helpful because other countries are doing uh, a lot more. We're the U.S. is only doing a fraction of what other countries are doing for their small businesses. And I think if we could look at what other places are doing and take that in consideration, the um, the Small Business Advocacy Center is great because I actually had that written down, a website for resources for small businesses. So I'm so happy to hear the governor say that. That is awesome. That's definitely a foot forward public promotion of small business, which I hear Grits Cafe, that's awesome. I'm so happy for that. And I know the governor has posted on his Twitter about us before, and that really has helped us too. But right now with uh, the state building being closed to the public, it's a little hard for us too. But maybe promoting more, maybe doing like a, a weekly or a monthly promotion of a small business that's near and dear to your heart. I don't know if you're already doing that. I'm sorry. I do follow you, but <laughs> there's so many tweets and stuff. It's hard to keep up, right? Um, I was thinking too, like maybe forgiveness for utilities if and rent if the if the place does have to close down because of COVID affecting yeah, or them. Even a partial forgiveness. Or a partial forgiveness, something like that. I don't know. It's just just thoughts. Um, maybe a state tax relief for small businesses that have less than a certain amount of employees. Um, a temporary wage subsidy for, for a few months for those workers that are working for small businesses. Maybe that could help relieve some of us. I know Canada is doing something like that where they are helping small businesses by providing like 56 cents an hour to that small business to give directly to their employees. And that way it helps the small business in turn. And it just ideas that I have found from other places. Um, I think, you know, the pets grant has really helped us because it, it is definitely going to help us play our employees and get back on track and actually buy product now since we had to run out of product since our product went bad from being closed for COVID. Yeah. You know, the pet, pets grant saved us. It did. And if you guys can help more places with the pets grant, that is awesome. It's just great. Yeah. And I think... Nevada is doing a really good job to try to help its small business, and I appreciate being part of this roundtable. Yeah. Those Thank are you. just a few of our thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Chief of Staff White, did you want to say something before we move on to the next businesses? Sure. Um, no, I was just going to chime in. Thank you for that input, especially on the, the positive cases within businesses. In our office, as, um, as you all know, we've had positive cases like many other offices around the state and the country and the world um, or businesses. And it is, uh, we are, I think, you know, after that, that first time where a lot of our staff had to go into quarantine, we all, you know, really uh, understood in a personal level what it meant um, to have the luxury of being able to work from home. Um, and that was a privilege for us to be able to, to be able to do that. Not everyone, especially our small businesses have the ability to do that. And that's uh, in so incredibly challenging. Um, and, and, you know, a, a million thoughts are going through my head as you all are saying these things and, and governor, I know they're going through yours too. 
Um, and I'm really looking forward to talking to Director Cage, our COVID director after this about, um, there has been a lot of rapid development when it comes to testing and way, ways to deploy that testing um, that can be more targeted. And we've started to look into some of those things, but, but hearing this from both of you so far, and I know we have more small businesses to get to, um, I think it, it's even further proof and evidence of why um, you know, this, this evolution of testing needs to, uh, needs to continue in Nevada as well and make sure that we can provide that more targeted approach. And so I just wanted to chime in and say that this is really good information for us to bring back to our health teams too and, and kind of bridge between the economic side and the health side since everything is all interconnected now. Can I just um, ask one more question? Are, I don't know in the vaccination um, tiers where small business owners are. I'm also an educator, so I know I'm going to be getting mine soon, but where in the tier are small business owners and their employees? Um, I know, you know, we have the 70 plus getting theirs in the, in the front of the line healthcare workers, but you know, small businesses are kind of like front of the line right now too. So what are your thoughts with that? And where are they in the tiers? Because I'm not sure about that. Well, we are doing everything we can to fully understand the situation with small businesses. Obviously, the teachers want to be at the front, the uh, first responders, healthcare workers, essential workers, and small businesses. Obviously, that all fits into the mix. We're trying to do a balance between our most vulnerable population and our businesses to try to impact the economy as little as we possibly can and keep you open. So the more vaccines we get, and I can tell you, Michelle spends 26 hours a day on the phone trying to get us more vaccines. Uh, she's calling everybody that'll listen to her and some that won't listen to her uh, just to try to get more vaccines. It's that important to all of us. So we will continue to be aware of that, but the suggestions that you're making are good. And I know Kate Marshall, the Lieutenant Governor's up there in the upper right-hand corner and uh, taking us all in and coming up with ideas along with Michael uh, Brown and, and Zach. So. You've got all of our ears, so we appreciate the good ideas that are coming forward. And just to let you know really quick, thanks, um, thanks, Gus. that's exactly right. We're trying to get those more vaccines. He's saying I'm calling, but um, there is no one who's calling more than the governor. And I think Washington DC is very well aware of that at the moment, um, which is a good thing. Um, and uh, as far as your vaccination question goes, um, we can get more information on small businesses. Um, that essential worker tier, that frontline worker tier, I think we all hate the word essential um, uh, very much. So thinking of frontline who has public exposure, things like that. Um, the Department of Public Health and the immunization team, as they put that lane together, um, obviously you mentioned educators are closer to the top. There is a bucket in that lane for frontline commerce and service industry um, that includes for food service and hospitality. Um, and, and that includes restaurant workers, that includes uh, um, cocktail waitresses who work on the Strip or in a property in, in Reno, et cetera, and throughout the state. Um, and, and the governor you know, really emphasized that as the team was looking at that. Um, and we are one of the few states that have explicitly called out those groups. Now we hope that we get so many vaccines at one point that prioritization no longer has to exist and we don't have to go by group um, and everyone's getting vaccinated in a much bigger pool, but for now uh, the governor really fought hard to make sure that that was part of that tiered system. Thank you, Michelle, and, and thank you, Gov, and um, the folks from Empowered Cafe. Um, I think the next folks uh, that we were hoping to hear from are the uh, Jonathan and Ashley from, from Spoonable, and I think there's just one of you um, there right now, so we'll take yeah. your opinions <laughs> and your insight. Hi, yeah, thank you so much for having us or having me. I'm Ashley. Uh, Bradley, I own Spoonable. Uh, we are a food truck uh, that sells frozen yogurt, ice cream, and sorbet uh, in Las Vegas. Um, we were also a Pets Grant recipient, and I can't stress enough um, how grateful we are uh, for that grant and how important it was for us in our business. Um, honestly, if we had not received the grant, we likely would not be operating right now. Um, you know, our business is a little bit challenging because we are a mobile business. And uh, there's also a seasonality uh, as a part of our business as well. So we operate from March through November and from March through November, we just have to work as hard as we can so that we have enough money to sustain our fixed um, costs throughout the winter um, when we scale back. Um, and so luckily with the PETS grant, we're super excited that we will have the opportunity to have another season um, next year. Um, I think one thing that's gonna be important for us and something to consider is 
Um, many mobile businesses like us, um, we 100% depend on events. And we understand that right now there aren't any events because uh, it isn't safe to do so. So we we totally get that. Um, and one thing that we, I guess, want to stress is things start to open up. We understand that it's not just going to be this flip of a switch and everything is just going to be opened back up and everything is going to be back to normal. We understand that it's going to be a progression. Um, so as we go through that progression, it's going to be super important that we just continue um, to get more support and more financial support. Um, because I think sometimes what happens is we feel a little bit of pressure to open up and operate because we need the money. And sometimes it's not safe to do that. And we understand that we have to keep safety first um, always. And so, uh, you know, I think, you know, one thing to maybe consider is sometimes you may need um, some sort of stipend or incentive to close your business because it's not safe to operate. But again, you, you know, feel pressure to operate because you need the money. It trickles down uh, to the consumer as well. And people feel pressure to, um, you know, support small businesses and go to small businesses because they don't want them to close. But sometimes it's not safe to do that. Um, and so, again, for a business that is um, mobile and we really depend on, on events for our success, um, we also operated at UNLV. So that was huge for us as well, too. We just started doing that. Um, and so we understand that we have to do that safely. But we just ask, you know, as you guys continue to work to help small businesses, that you um, think about ongoing support and how what that will look like as things begin to reopen and maybe even consider some incentives for uh, businesses where it might not be safe um, for them to open in any capacity at this point. And uh, again, just continue support as we uh, get vaccinated, we're all super excited to get vaccinated, but until things, you know, 100% go back to normal, that continued support is gonna be really important. Thank you, Ashley. I think you raised um, a lot of good points specifically about your your business and your type of businesses that are, are definitely reliant on events and, and being mobile and moving around. So we really appreciate that insight. Um, I have Walter from Smiling with Hope Pizza next on my list. And Walter, um, are you able to unmute yourself and, and provide some feedback as well? Yeah, am I unmuted? I can hear you. My Thank first you. Zoom. I never Zoomed before. Okay. Glad to have you. Yeah, thank you for having us. I um, want, want to thank the governor, first of all. I, I read about all the flack you're taking. Uh, I mean, no matter what you do, you're going to have people wanting to hang you and praise you, you know, and you're hanging with it all in your staff. Uh, thank you so much. It's very inspiring. Um, I don't know how you do it. Uh, I'd quit. Um, it's amazing. Thank you for doing the public service and taking the heat. Walter, I'm going to interrupt you. You're the inspiration. You folks are the inspiration that keep us going. Believe me, day in and day out. And I appreciate you for that. So thank okay. you. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I have a kind of, uh, I don't know, maybe an interesting take on all this stuff. I, I started out as a school teacher, a special education teacher, and I taught in big school districts like Austin, Texas, uh, where if I was sick, I pop a few numbers on the phone and there's a sub. Uh, if I need an operation, I get a leave of absence. This, the, the system keeps rolling. Um, and I created award-winning bakeries and pizzerias with special needs children. And uh, that's what led us to do this when I stopped teaching. My wife and I are both senior citizens. We work all hours. I make every pizza. I make every dough. I shop every day at the, the markets for produce. And we have a total of nine employees and they're all, well, eight of, uh, three of them are special needs because that's our mission to employ people with special needs. Three of them are special needs people that historically would never have a job due to their cognitive limitations. Um, but my background and my wife's background, she works full time too. So we're there 24 seven at our business. If I had my hips replaced a year and a half ago, both of them, we had to close for three months before the virus. Um, our employees are mainly college students at UNR, wonderful students, but they live communally and they get exposed to the virus all the time. My roommate was exposed to someone, so they have to get tested. So all of a sudden our staff 
which is so unlike being in a big system where you have subs, you're short. Um, and it, it, it was getting so complicated that in January 1st, we decided to close our business until we get our vaccine. A friend of ours had died, several have had the virus, they're having lasting effects. Uh, you know, you know, I don't have to tell you about that. So Judy and I just feel that we needed to close. So we're closed right now. Uh, during the pandemic, we were doing great financially. Uh, we're the number one rated pizzeria in the United States on Yelp. We're kind of famous and we have plenty of customers. They come from all over the world. So we didn't, we sell out of dough every day. We were the other side of the pandemic. We were doing, I had to cut back, but I see so many businesses, friends, small restaurants, their employees are making $10 an hour. They're get by people. They come to work sick and don't say anything because they have to eat and you can't blame them for that. Um, so it, it, it was just getting too scary for us. So we shut down, we didn't take money from the grant because we didn't need it. Uh, now we've been closed and we don't know when we're gonna get our vaccine. We keep applying, checking websites and it's so confusing. We have a friend who works with us, she's actually 70. She ran the, the downtown library in uh, Reno and she loves pizza and she's from New Jersey like me. So she works with us part-time, she's 71. She just got her vaccine, but she was on the phone for 11 hours, pushing, 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 trying to get in the queue. Um, so we're, we're really confused about when it opens up, how there doesn't seem to be a lot of clear cut. And I understand because everything's on the fly, you know, you're playing on this, like a football game, you're, you're changing on the fly. Uh, so the more instruction we can get as to when the vaccine for our employees, like we want to get our special needs employees and all our college student employees vaccine and us before we go back to work because we're just scared we're gonna die. And I, I, most people can't afford to do what we're doing. And that's the sad part. I go now as a customer to a restaurant to support them. And I walk in now as a customer and I see the food service people working. And I'm going, oh my gosh, what are, oh, it's just, it's terrifying. Yeah, and I know you're doing all you can, but if we could get more clear instruction on when we're eligible, how do we get on the queue? Who do we go to? Where do we go? Things like that would really help a lot from our perspective. Thank you. Thank you, Walter. I see the governor. It looks like he's going to weigh in a little bit there. So, Gov, if yeah, you want to say something. Yeah, thank you very much. And to hear what both you and the folks at uh, Impark Cafe are doing for helping our most vulnerable. I sincerely appreciate that and grits. We are doing, believe me, and I understand the urgency and the desire to get vaccines. We are doing everything humanly possible and then some to get more vaccines into the state. And I would like nothing better than to just open the doors and open mass vaccination sites and get needles stuck in everybody's arm. But we're not quite there yet. Believe me, we're working on it. Uh, every minute of every hour, of every day, our, our federal delegation is working on it. Uh, I'm seeing that the government is buying more vaccines now. The manufacturers are ramping up. We've got a few new vaccines on the horizon, hopefully that uh, will be uh, approved and we'll go from there. But we, I hear you, I'm listening and we're gonna do everything we can. Yeah, you know, I, I appreciate that. Um, like I say, I know it's all new times. It's, we don't, we can't look back. Uh, we can't look back and say, oh, that happened 10 years ago. So here's what we do. Uh, yeah, you're okay. doing a great job, but yeah, hopefully things with the new administration now we get, we get things rolling and thank you for everything you're doing. and and. Thank you to every, uh, good luck to everybody out there on the panel. I mean, I, like I said, we're one of the few that were making money. So I, I just feel terrible. I feel terrible. You didn't do nothing wrong. You know, you, yeah, thank you. We appreciate you, Walter. And I'll tell you what, at some point when you're vaccine, vaccinated, we're going to drive to Reno and get pizza and bring it back to my office. So you save some of that pizza dough for a late night call. We'll, we'll, oh, we'll, we'll you anytime, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Thanks, thanks Megan. Thanks, Governor. Thank you, Walter. I think Governor knows that pizza is my absolute um, favorite food, so we will make good on that promise. 
Thank and you. Um, Walter, I know you said this is your first Zoom call. So if you go back to that little microphone, yeah, I'm gonna mute yourself again. Perfect. And then I think um, that brings us to the last business we have on our panel, which is um, Cody Highsmith. So Cody, um, if you want to unmute yourself and, and provide a little bit of, of information and some of your insight, we're so excited to hear it. Great. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, now I'm very hungry for pizza. So, uh, okay. So we're Via Dante's and we do hospitality consulting, whether it's in nightclubs, lounges, restaurants, you name it, we pretty much do it. And we're kind of in a unique kind of area because we solely rely on, you know, tourism to come and demand, you know, drive demand for rest, new restaurants, new lounges, or whether it's consulting with the restaurants on how to get, you know, additional people from Korea into the restaurants, so on and so forth. So for us, we've been looking at ways to try and diversify our reach and take our knowledge that we've learned here in the state of Nevada. Um, obviously, you know, I grew up here. I went to UNLV for grad school, undergrad. So it's um, obviously Vegas is near and dear to my heart. So we like to take what we learned and try to apply it in other places. But with us, we've been doing, my wife and I, it's, it's a family business. My wife and I, we want to build something great for our, our almost two-year-old son. So what we've been doing is obviously we're working from home, but for us, what we've noticed talking with other businesses and business owners is there's really kind of a, there's no centralized online resource where small businesses can go to figure out how to whether it's diversify their business, how to expand their business during a pandemic, or even how to work from home. Um, I know a lot of my friends who run businesses, they have no idea how to onboard anybody, whether you know they, they want to hire people or potentially they can because their industry is booming, but they don't know how to onboard anybody in order to have something work from home. So there's a lot of challenges that small businesses are facing, obviously ones that don't have brick and mortar facades. Um, so, that, you know, when the governor said about the centralized online form and the website, I think that's going to be a huge bonus. I think you're going to get a lot of hits on that. And um, for us, what we're seeing is, you know, companies need to evolve. Like ours, we're constantly trying to evolve now and and look for new potential clients and new potential industries to get into. But I think it kind of goes back to the diversification of industries within Vegas, per se. Obviously, Nevada is doing great with, you know, the solar and industry and everything coming in and all the data banks. But I still think it boils down to bringing in additional businesses, whether it's the medical field, um, you know, pharmaceuticals, whatever it may be to help drive the small businesses. Because if we had a couple additional, you know, sources of income, we could, you know, like the ice cream shop or the pizza shop or whatever it may be, people will be still be shopping there or buying pizza there because the farmer school industry is, you know, basically still working like normal, um, you know, and so on and so forth. So I think that's probably more of a global issue for the state. And I know the governor has been pushing to get more industries in. And I think that that will help alleviate our requirement on tourism so much where, you know, I know obviously our business is based on tourism. So I think, um, you know, a centralized source also on how to, you know, diversify would be great. And obviously we want everybody to, you know, shop local, but also I understand that if we just shop local, the people that are working at the larger hotel chains, they won't have a job, you know, they are locals as well. So for us, it's just more of um, just to, trying to diversify and, and I think the, the state's been doing great with adding the grants and adding more and more money, which is fantastic. And I think that it's somewhat on us as well to not just rely on the, on the state and the government, but it's also us to try and evolve. If we have the ability to evolve, obviously some brick and mortar businesses, they can't, they can't expand their reach apart from like a five mile radius or, or whatever the delivery radius is. So for us, it's just about possibly expanding and finding new opportunities with, within this new crazy world that we live in. So that's where, uh, that's my, my take on it. And hopefully that was, that was worth the uh, couple minutes there. So I apologize if I just rambled for a bit. Nope. We wanted to hear what you had to say. That was very impressive. It's important and you made some good points. So thank you for that. Okay. Thanks. Send it great. Go thank ahead. you, Cody. Thank you, Governor. Um, so those are the small businesses that we were able to have join us today. Um, the next portion of this roundtable, we'll be hearing from 
our very own Lieutenant Governor Kate Marshall on some ways um, the state can help small businesses find resources. I think we've started to hear some some great suggestions there. So we'll turn it over to the Lieutenant Governor to provide some, some insights and, um, and some thoughts there. Thank you, Megan. Um, and thank you, Governor, first off, for having me as part of this roundtable and for your leadership in recognizing just how important our small businesses are to our economy here in Nevada and the many and varied needs that they have. I, I also want to mention um, Speaker Frierson because he is also working with us on this bill uh, to create a small business center um, that the governor has uh, identified as a need and that you guys have identified as a need. Um, one of the things that I'm hearing from you guys, other than the fact that uh, you have grits and my, my dad is very specific about how he likes his grits. I, do, I mean, do you run into this where people go into your restaurant and go, okay, there's certain ways to eat grits, right? Okay, so just, I just want to make sure we're <laughs> like that. Um, but one of the things that I, I'm hearing from you and one of the things that we've seen in the data is that the difference between a small business being able to keep on going during this time or have to shut its doors can be whether or not they can access the kinds of programs that federal and state and local governments have to help our businesses get through. And so one of the reasons that the governor is showing this leadership with respect to small business center is to make sure that there is a place of contact where my office can then say, all right, these are your needs, we're going to connect you to where we can meet those needs with the kinds of programs the federal government has, the state government has, and local government has. So the access and making sure you have access can be the difference between your ability to make it through this pandemic or not. But we also know that the pandemic, in some ways, this aid, having these grants and things, is masking the incredible damage that is being done to our small businesses. Because it's not just about opening the door, but it's about thriving. And for our economy to thrive, we need you to thrive. So in addition to this resource center connecting you with those grants, we also need to make sure that going forward, you can call and we have a bat phone. You can call and you say, hey, I don't know what's going on with my license. And we have a bat phone and help you navigate what's going on there. You can call and say, uh, you know, taxation just said that I don't know what, and we have a bat phone and we can help you work through that, right? So that's the second piece that the resource center will do. The third piece is we cannot improve what we don't measure, as you guys know in the business, right? Got to know what is going on before we can make it better. So is to make sure that we identify the concerns that we're hearing from small businesses and where they're saying that we need to step up to the plate in a better way and then provide that information to our legislature and to our governor so we can improve on our systems and so that we can continue to provide you better and better service. Because at the end of the day, government is about we are serving you. That's what we're about. And so our ability to create this center, to connect you to grants and programs through the, that are available because of the coronavirus and the pandemic, to be a bat phone for needs that you have, ongoing needs that you have, because I don't think any of you have a huge HR department. I'm just guessing, but I, I think that's right, right? And then lastly, to make sure that we measure so we can improve so that you guys can thrive, so that we can eat pizza, so that we can get grits. I love frozen yogurt. And so that we can go to those re that restaurant in the Grand Sawyer building. You guys are wonderful. And I, I just, I'm so appreciative. Thank you for what you do. And with the governor's leadership, we are going to create this resource center for you. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. That was a, a great, update and I know that all the folks here are looking forward to, to continue working on this. Um, Governor, did you want to weigh in? I did. I just want to okay. say thank you very much, Lieutenant Governor. We're counting on you to put this together and provide your bat phone so that they all have a place to call and get through these problems. But 
to, and, and Kate understands we're going to do a lot more listening than we are talking because we need to hear your, your situations, the problems you face and your potential suggestions because you're closest to the situation and we're counting on you to help us provide, uh, provide some of the answers. So thanks, Megan. Thank you, Governor, and, and thank you, Lieutenant Governor Kate Marshall, again. Um, at this time, I think we're going to hear potentially from both Treasurer Zach Conine and the Governor's Office of Economic Development Executive Director Michael Brown um, for an update on the PETS program, and then we'll have time for a short um, media Q&A before we pull to a close at three. So, um, Treasurer Conine or Director Brown? Thanks so much, Megan, and uh, Governor, thanks so much for having us today. Uh, Lieutenant Governor, it's always a pleasure, and I'm for one, looking forward to activating a light on the top of the building so we can signal you when there's a small business problem uh, and you can sweep into action. You know, that idea really came out of a bunch of calls that Director Brown and I made, we wanted to make sure that money was going to small businesses like you and not to fraud. So a lot of times we end up getting on the phone and reaching out and trying to make sure that there's a small business on the other end of that application. Uh, and a lot of those conversations went something like, oh, that's great. I really need the money. I'm going to be able to use it to keep people employed. But while I gotcha, can I help get a little help on something else? And I think what we've realized through this process is there is a massive need for assistance for small businesses, and it's not just monetary. So I'm so glad that that resource center will be up and running uh, so that people have someone to call. You know, with PETS, we received applications from more than 13,000 businesses representing a need of almost $150 million. The program started small. It started at 20 million. Now it's at 50. And with the legislators' uh, help, we'll be getting up to $100 million, which will make it the largest small business assistance program in the history of the state. And, you know, we've learned a lot along the way. And I, I think we've learned that from the entrepreneurs that we're talking to now. Uh, you know, you all have had to pivot 10 different ways in the last couple of months. Uh, and you've carried a lot of the load for the state, right? We ask folks to stay home uh, and stay safe. You're the ones actually making sure that your employees can stay safe and that they're making the right decisions uh, when they don't feel well, that your customers can come in and, and be safe, right? And I know that sometimes that's really, really difficult. I, I come from the restaurant industry. I know what it's like uh, when Bob has a tough night and can't come in and, and wash dishes. Uh, that's a different thing when it's a pandemic, right? That's not just a, a couple of hours of difficulty. That can be a couple of weeks and, and we hear you. Uh, and we're glad we're able to provide this bit of support. And I, I really appreciate all the suggestions about other types of support because we're always trying to figure out the best way to help out. Uh, but oftentimes it's you all who know the best way to help out. So I'm hopeful this is the beginning of a number of conversations. Uh, and we've had plenty of conversations offline and I'm deeply looking forward to bringing uh, my three-year-olds and my seven-year-old out to get frozen yogurt. Uh, they certainly ate a bunch of snow this morning, uh, but. You know, later on down the road, I think there's an opportunity for flavoring. Um, but we've gotten out about $42 million of the $50 million of the PETS grant. We'll be out uh, the rest of the $50 million in the next couple of weeks. And hopefully the legislature uh, is able to pass that bill and prioritizes putting money back into Nevada's pockets as much as possible. We're going to keep fighting to get you the funds that you all need. Uh, as long as you keep telling us what we can do better, it is all very much appreciated. Thank you so much. Yeah, let me just say, Walter, the statement you made about trying to help the get by people, that just hit me really, really right in the heart. I mean, that's, those are the folks we're ultimately trying to help and uh, helping small businesses get through this helps those folks too. And, uh, you know, we appreciate the support we also got from the Latin Chamber, the Las Vegas Chamber, the Reno Chamber um, in government, communicating with small business was its own challenge. And without those chambers, you know, uh, they, ma they made it all possible. And then Cody, your comment about diversification, that is what we have to do. And when you see initiatives like what the governor has for the medical school and for the engineering school at UNLV, those are the little Legos that help build the foundation for something bigger. So for us to bring manufacturing to the state, to bring uh, advanced healthcare to the state, those two, those two projects are critically important. They're the, they're, they are the foundation. And I'm the guy who's been listening and taking notes and I appreciate all of this insight. Thank you very much. Thank you, Treasurer Conine and Director Brown. Before we take a couple questions from the press who have joined us, I wanted to provide one last opportunity for our um, business owners who are on the Zoom with us today. If there's anything that 
the governor or the lieutenant governor or the treasurer or director brown have said that that you would like to um, pipe in with right now um, so we can get it on the record and so director brown can take notes on it um, i think we can can do that before we move into a, a quick q a um, with our members of the press okay well i'm not seeing anyone move to unmute so that's great and so i will turn it over quickly um, to members of the press who are on the call um, they have Many of them have been on a Zoom with me before, so if you would not mind using the raise hand feature, and then I'll call on you and you can ask your question. So we'll give it a second. Okay, great. I see Bob Conrad from This Is Reno with his hand raised first. So Bob, you can go ahead um, and ask your question, and April will go to you next. I just want to say thank you. Uh, we are a recipient of the PETS grant. It's very helpful to us. We are a small business, operate on a shoestring budget, and uh, it's been very helpful to us. So thank you for holding this forum. Well, thanks, Bob. I was expecting a question, but I think that's uh, even nicer than a question. So I think maybe April will have um, a question for some of those on the panel. So April, if you want to go ahead, and then if there's anyone else who wants to raise their hand, um, we'll put you in the queue next. Yeah, uh, you know, it was mentioned that almost uh, $150 million was requested during that initial application. You've given out $51 million, assuming the legislature passes an additional $50 million that still only covers two thirds of those initial applications. Um, so are there any plans to push this PETS program uh, beyond uh, what you're currently asking for in from the legislature? Or what else needs to be done, I guess, beyond this to help small businesses? Because the need is, is overwhelming, obviously. Well, April, as I think you know, we're facing a difficult budget situation this time around. Uh, we're doing everything we can. We found $50 million to put into this program. and. And I'm thrilled that we're able to find $50 million. I'm, I'm the type that look at the glasses, it's two thirds full now, not a third empty. Uh, you know, we've managed to help two thirds of the businesses, hopefully, with this being approved through the legislature. I'm proud of that. I'm excited for those businesses. And we'll have to wait and see what comes from the federal government in terms of any potential funds for uh, helping our budgets across the country. But for right now, we're going to be at $100 million, hopefully. <laughs> And Governor, if I may. Certainly. One of the things we've also been doing, April, is we're directing people to other sources of funds. So the Paycheck Protection Program, which is helpful for some of the businesses uh, that also applied for pets, is open. There's also been grants at different uh, cities and county levels. And so we're working to push people in those directions uh, while we continue to ask the federal government for the support we very much need. Thank you for that question, April, and thank you, Governor and Treasurer, for providing uh, those really helpful answers. Hopefully, if there are other businesses watching who um, may need that assistance, they can reach out to the Treasurer's office um, for some of that. So I don't see any other hands raised from members of the media who are on the call. Um, there we go. Sam, that's from the AP, of course. Um, go ahead, Sam. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time today. Um, I wish I had a question for the business owners instead of a budget question, but Alas, um, my question is, does the 50 million come from the general fund or is the hope that the legislature passes it using federal relief dollars, either yet to be passed or left over from the CARES Act? I can jump in here, go if you want. <clears throat> Thanks, Michelle. Yeah, go ahead, Michelle. Great. Thanks, Sam. That's a great question. Um, uh, I, and I was biting my tongue to jump in because um, Gov is, is not giving himself as much credit there. He didn't, uh, the $50 million is not just found. He worked really hard um, with the coronavirus relief funds money that we had in 2020 to strategically utilize those funds. Um, you know, reminding everyone that we had that original 1230 deadline for expending all of them that ultimately got extended on the 27th, three days before. Um, but the governor uh, worked hard to make sure there was a plan for uh, for the ability to use some of those funds into 2021 in case that that deadline um, did occur at the at the end of 2020. And so, um, because of that strategy and because of really being resourceful and thoughtful about how we budget with that CRF money, um, there was that carryover, um, and that carryover. Um, was approved by the by the legislature um, at an IFC meeting um, and last year, uh, and now goes into the general fund, and so uh, it will have to be uh, reappropriated back to fiscal year 2021 by the legislature in this upcoming session, and then can go out as an appropriation uh, to the pets program. 
Thank, Thank you, you, Michelle, and thanks, Sam, for the question. Um, and then I know that Alexander from Univision is having trouble with his microphone, so I think this is a question for you, Treasurer. Um, he would like to know so he can tell folks um, where they can find out more information um, about some of the um, other services and grant programs and, and federal funds that are, are being offered. I, I believe you can handle that question, Treasurer. Thanks so much, Megan. Um, and I'm sure my staff will appreciate this. The easiest way is probably just to reach out to us uh, and email us at ask at nevadatreasurer.gov. We can point you in the right direction. Um, but also, I really encourage folks to reach out to their local chambers. Chambers like the Latin Chamber of Commerce have been doing really yeoman's work, getting the word out uh, and making sure that people can apply for things. Uh, another great resource is your bank. If you have a banking relationship, groups like the Nevada Bankers Association have been doing a lot to try and make sure that those funds get to where they need to go and that businesses are able to apply. Uh, but I think the best advice I can give to anyone is if you need help, reach out because we can always send you to the right department. But I think the most important thing is to raise your hand and say you need help. We're here to help. Thank you, Treasurer. And at this time, I think we'll take some closing remarks from the governor and then we'll um, pull to a close for today. So um, before I kick it to the governor, I would like to thank everyone for being here. This is I think the, uh, one of the first steps in the, in the process here. And so as much as we can continue to have these conversations and as the governor said, do more um, listening than talking, um, I say is probably the person who's talked the most on this round table, um, we'll continue to do so. So thank you for being here. And, and governor, if you have any closing thoughts before we pull to, uh, to a conclusion here. Well, I wanna thank each and every one of you for taking the time to join us. And of course my staff and uh, Lieutenant Governor and Treasurer and Michael Brown and, and everybody, but I learned a lot listening to you, what you had to say. And there's some areas that we can improve and we can do better. And one of the things you talked about was publicity. And I'm going to get it together with Megan. And there's got to be a way. And I'm going to ask this of the media. I know sometimes you find a way to, to write articles and some of them are supportive and some not so much. Maybe write a little article, have a feature where you feature one or two businesses a day, a small business. And if the current does it and the indie does it and the RGJ and the RJ and ever the TV stations do it, we can get the word out there. I mean, we've heard some great stories. I mean, Walter and, you know, Grits and I mean, you guys are incredible and Power Cafe, what you've done. These are great stories that we got to get out to the public and say, hey, look, if you're going to go buy a coffee, you don't have to go to Starbucks. You can go to a local place and buy the coffee and you don't have to go to Pizza Hut. You can go to a local pizza parlor. We should tell these stories because they're wonderful stories that show what true Nevadans are, the true bit and resiliency that you have. And we can do a better job amplifying that. And I guarantee you, my office will do it. Megan's, when Megan gets an idea, she's pretty determined about it. She can tweet it out there. We can have Carson the Tortoise put it on his Twitter or something to just get attention drawn to the fact that great job that you're doing. So thank you for doing that. And we're going to continue to work with you. And Lieutenant Governor, you've got a big job ahead of you, but I'm confident that you can do it and get this all done. So thank you all for joining us. Have a great day. Stay safe, everybody. Stay healthy. <laughs>